Okay, good afternoon, folks, and welcome to a special webinar this afternoon, <coughs> excuse me, on aqua exercise instructors and modality, speaking to two industry leaders here, Dom Gill and Claire Barker-Hemmings. Welcome, Dom. Welcome, Claire. Thank you for spending your time with us to, to go through a really important uh, modality that we have in our, in our centres, obviously, and one that I'm personally very much interested in, being a swimmer from way back. Um, before we get started, maybe Claire, you could give us a bit of an idea as to what your background and experience in the industry is. Yeah, of course. So I've been teaching Aqua Fitness for probably around 25 years now. Um, taught a lot of land-based classes, dance classes, but Aqua is the thing that really got my passion. I don't know why. Uh, since 2009, I've been delivering new instructor education, continuing education, and I've been lucky enough to go across the states and present, go across to Europe and present, and also go to um, confer conferences around the world. So I've been really lucky to be exposed to lots of different aqua modalities, and I love bringing it back and sharing it with my participants here in Australia. Fantastic. And Dom, what's, what's your story? Yeah, uh, Bill, I'm, uh, Barry, I'm the same as you. I've, um, I've, I've had a swimming background. I swam as a kid, um, did squad training, swam at state level, and then decided it was too too hard to, to continue. It um, required such a commitment and slog. And, and I didn't have the natural talent. I just had the hard work and determination. So I decided to give that up. And then uh, first job while at uni, I decided to swim teach um, and got a job as a swimming teacher. And after about three months, I got literally thrown in the deep end and asked to teach an aqua fitness class uh, without any qualifications. Um, and, and did it and loved it. And, and I've been doing it ever since. And that was uh, back in 93, I started. So I've been teaching swimming and aqua fitness ever since and just love it. So, you know, they say, do what you love, love what you do. And it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely something I'm very passionate about. I can certainly relate to your comments there, Dom. I mean, it's very difficult when you don't have the basic skill to actually commit yourself to following that long black line, yeah. lap after lap after lap. Um, very hard work to do that. and. Uh, like you, I graduated from looking down to looking up and got onto a surfboard and, and sort of went from there. That was uh, <laughs> my natural regression, I guess. But um, quite clearly, uh, you know, obviously working in the in the sector and, and being involved for the time you have, there must be things which which motivate you and, and keep you engaged. It is very hard to be looking at that long black line, of course. So what, what uh, Claire, what keeps you engaged and, and uh, committed and, you know, keeping on, keeping on, basically? Keeping on, keeping on. It's a, that's sometimes a hard question to answer. I love, I love everything about being around the pool, teaching fitness there. Um, from the participants' point of view, they're so loyal and they come week after week and they can do things in the water that they can't do on land anymore. So the demographic does tend to be older, maybe. Um, I do have young people come through to my sessions as well, but it's just the people that come through, they're there very much because they need to be there to keep their fitness going for their everyday life. They're not there really maybe to, you know, change their body shape per se. They're there for completely different reasons. And they're such a loyal crowd and they're a fun crowd. It's a really inclusive um, environment and it's just fun changing it up and, you know, trying different things with the water. So it, it, you're a swimmer, you know what it's like to be around the water. It's just an environment that creates this, this calm, but also you can have this, almost like um, turbulent experience as well as calmness. It's, it's amazing. And Dom, what, what keeps you motivated and getting up every morning at some ungodly hour to get into the pool? <laughs> well, look, it, it, again, I, I love the water. So all my work is in the water. I teach swimming to, to babies from six months yeah. upwards. Um, and my real passion is, is fitness. I've got a, a big, wide sporting background. I've probably played every sport. Um, still play soccer and tennis um, and volleyball and it, uh, being active is is my happy place and, and being in the water is my happy place so those two worlds have met there and and it's just good when you do something you love that you can be really committed and passionate about it and, and uh, teaching aqua fitness had brought me a, a community and an environment where um, I, I really felt uh, welcomed and I felt like I was um, doing something that benefited others. And that's always a good thing for me. I really love that. Um, Aqua participants are really committed and building those relationships with clients. Um, I was talking yesterday with someone about the, um, 
the fact that I worked at a centre where I taught for 14 years at the same centre, the same classes, several mornings a week. And the people that uh, participated in those classes, 80% of them were there on the first day that I started and the last day before I left 14 years later. And, and you know, it, it moves beyond just a form of fitness. You know, it's a, it's a sense of community. Um, and as far as now, I spend more time teaching other instructors than I do teaching participants. Um, and that passion for education is also there. And, and I love sharing uh, what I love doing. So that's, that's my motivation. Firstly, um, staying active, staying healthy, sharing that with participants and then sharing those skills and knowledge with, with new instructors to, to get them to, to do the same. Have either of you graduated or participated into ocean swimming at all? I, I just got into it recently, <laughs> in fact. My brother-in-law um, lives in Cronulla here in Sydney, and um, he started a, a, a social group on a Sunday morning. And I've been, I've been doing ocean swimming. I did nippers as a kid for a couple of seasons, but I lived in the Western suburbs. So I grew up in, in the Western suburbs of Sydney. So getting to the beach every Sunday morning wasn't ideal. Um, but yeah, just in the last couple of years, I've been doing some ocean swimming and I love it. And how, how I, is that? Sorry. I grew up in London, so I had no beach as I grew up. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm not got, I'm not come from a swimming background, but I must admit in this recent months, I mean, I live in Melbourne, the sea is not as attractive as Sydney. I have been in the water in the winter, it was 10 degrees. So I tried it and I, yeah, maybe I'll try again in the summer. <laughs> So, so, Claire, given your accent, I did actually see a program uh, a couple of years ago from the UK on, on bog swimming. Um, bog swimming? <laughs> B-O-G swimming. Um, it didn't look too appealing, i got to say. But <laughs> Through muddy waters, is that? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Not sure, no. <laughs> anyway, back, back to script. Um, we, did, we did digress there. So, look, we've been running a survey uh, recently, and we're going to finish up with a, a link to that survey, which is showing that about two thirds of managers at the moment are finding it difficult to recruit appropriately qualified instructors. And to some degree that reflects the overall industry data because I was reading something um, about a month or so ago, which said that pre COVID in the wider physical activity exercise gym sector, there was about 140,000 people employed either part-time or full-time. And that had dropped to 60,000 now, which is you know more than 50% drop off. Mm. So. What, what's the story with, with aqua exercise? Dom, you okay, first. So, oh, sorry, Claire, you go first. Yeah, I'll go first. If I let Dom speak, I'll never get in. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've, my own slant on it really is the, the recruitment process for, for instructors, because I know from the way I got into teaching land-based classes, I was going to land-based classes and it was a very easy transition. I knew what I was going to get into as a dancer. I went to land-based classes and it seemed a, a transition just to become an aerobics instructor back in the day. And also with Les Mills programs, you do the program and being a younger person, you may be looking for a new career or you're looking for an additional income. You know, that said so the, the recruitment process maybe from that angle is easier. When you look at the demographic that comes to an aqua fitness class, they're there because, you know, they can't really work maybe out on deck, though some of them can, but there is a different demographic. So you haven't got people in front of you that you can necessarily recruit from so I think that's one of the one of the big issues also we're not we're not very visible to maybe other parts of the gym so if you are working in a gym setting you're in the gym you might see what's going on in the studio but you don't really see what's going down in the pool and the other thing I pass over to Dom is that I don't think it seemed as being very sexy <laughs> maybe maybe that's the whole thing about it Dom can speak a bit more about that yeah, I'm, I'm confused as to why you wanted to pass over to me when you said it wasn't so sexy. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. You're, you're the exception, Dom. You're the exception. <laughs> well, look, we do have an image problem. Um, firstly, within the fitness industry, we have a very low profile for the very reason that we're not in a studio. Um, so if we are, it, it's symbolically and, and literally, we are slightly detached from the fitness industry, from fitness clubs. And majority of classes or a lot of classes happen in aquatic centers that do or do not have, you know, um, group fitness studios or, or gyms and weights. And so that, that's an issue because we sit, aqua fitness kind of sits between the two worlds. It's, it's not 
founded and based completely in the aquatic uh, industry, in aquatic centres. Um, and sometimes we're viewed as a slight nuisance to those aquatic centres because we get in the swimmer's way or we get in the learn to swim way or classes can only be run in between um, learn to swim classes or uh, the fitness industry. Uh, it's an issue because a lot of the classes aren't at fitness clubs. There are very few fitness centres that have pools and yet the classes are very fitness based aqu aqua fitness is a strong fitness genre um, that most people don't know about. Uh, um, so that, that's always our challenge is how do we raise the profile of aqua fitness classes within the fitness industry to get the true pre appreciation for that form of fitness. And that was you know, reflected in several years ago, um, aqua fitness got dropped off the uh, Phylex schedule for the very reason that they forgot to book the pool. You know, and that, that just sums everything up. They forgot to pull, put, book a pool. They didn't have a pool to use. So there were no aqua fitness sessions at Phylex that year. And then we were up in arms. We had an aqua forum. Bill Moore came along, um, started working with us very closely to see what the challenges are. And um, very luckily, and, and through a lot of hard work, it's taken a couple of years. But what we have done is shared with him the challenges as far as the skill shortage, because um, there, are, there, there possibly could be a, a shortage of skill, uh, skilled aqua instructors because if they were going through fitness organizations, they would have to do their Cert 3 first and then they would have to do their aqua module. Now, over the last two years, we've worked really closely with Fitness Australia and, and Skills IQ and, and been going through a few drafts to now have a new skill set released, which is completely dedicated to aqua fitness. Uh, aqua exercise and and I've got to mention Chris Alexander's name because he's been a driving force behind no, don't, that. Don't mention, don't mention Chris. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're very, very grateful to him because, you know, there are a key uh, industry leaders that we've, we've all been working together with Chris and, and pushing this through and eventually it got through last month. As a result, Fitness Australia has put back on an aqua category. So we've got a specific category now you can track numbers and, and, and get new members, which is great. Um, and again, I, I found out recently that uh, Fitness Australia has put through um, a, a submission to try and get some funding so that the fitness industry can, can train more instructors. Um, so we're very grateful for the work that you do, um, but I think there's still a lot that we can do to raise the profile of Aqua Fitness within the fitness community. Absolutely, Dom. And I noticed a couple of comments coming through in the chat room. And if just while I'm on that, if you have a question, if you can put that in the Q&A the box rather than the chat. But there's a couple of comments coming through that, that the swimming and aqua doesn't actually belong under fitness. Mm. And I, I don't want to go in that path because that could probably open up a Pandora's box. But mm. what I and I'm sure that Chris has spoken to you about where what we currently know is Fitness Australia is going. And in a, a week's time today, we will no longer be Fitness Australia. We will be another entity which people have to dial in next week to find out what it is but part of the reason for the change we are making is a, is a strategic one to actually embrace more modalities that perhaps have felt like they're on the outer or weren't included and I think um, hopefully when that's rolled out uh, next week um, people will see there is some sincerity in what we're trying to do but anyway yeah wonderful so, so sorry just speaking to the um the skills shortage I think now this new skill set will uh, address a few issues as far as getting people trained, um, doing the Cert 3 plus uh, aqua modules or aqua units to make someone an aqua instructor was expensive, um, took up a lot of time and energy in training people to clean a dumbbell or, you know, uh, work workplace and safety within a gym, the gym floor or how to swing a kettlebell. So people were being trained in uh, things that weren't really relevant to make them a great uh, aqua fitness instructor. And the new skill set that's just been released is completely dedicated and relevant to making someone a quality fit, uh, aqua fitness instructor. So really, I think it will take a little bit to, to pick up, um, but hopefully it will uh, meet the needs of the industry and start will start training up more people. The other thing that's great is that it will... Um, it will have consistency across the board. So no matter who is training aqua instructors, they will have to meet the same criteria, um, whether they're a fitness training organization 
an aquatic training organization, TAFE, whoever it is, they will have to meet the criteria. So it's all about getting the word out, doing things like this to get the word out so that people know in the industry what needs to happen um, to build us back up to, to a level that we should be at. So Claire, Dom, Dom just mentioned uh, the TAFEs then. I've been speaking to some of the RTOs that deal with Cert 3 and 4 in, in uh, physical, sorry, in fitness. And they're mm -hmm. telling me that they, they've never had higher withdrawal rates and they've never had lower enrollment rates uh, than currently experiencing. And that's a direct result, I think, of people leaving the industry because of COVID. Have you got any idea how that's actually translating across to the specialist aqua exercise, you know, courses and stuff? Yeah, I think there, there was historically a lot of the RTOs or the TAFEs and um, people dropped the aqua skill set because there was a low take up. Um, maybe it was because it was just too much for people to do just to do an aqua um, qualification, do a full set three, do the gym things and then add on the aqua. So you'd have people, not enough people signing up for the aqua components, the aqua electives. I think that was part of the problem. And um, the other thing I, that happens maybe is that when people go to learn to teach aqua, they don't realize how challenging it actually is because the amount of times that people say to me, oh, I'm going to learn to teach aqua because it's really easy to teach. Um, and to be quite honest, it, it, it's not. It's, it's, it's challenging to, because you're on a deck. And there were a few things that poured into this. So people would start their training, then maybe, you know, they discover it's not, as fun as maybe it seems because you're getting used to working on a hard concrete floor. Um, it's a noisy environment. There's limited resources, um, you know, because sometimes the stereos, you have don't have a stereo, you don't have a mic. So there's all these things that are working against you to make it very hard. And I'm not trying to downset it because I love it, but I think that's what's happened in the past. And then, you know, then they don't feel supported. So we know as part of any education, cert three, you need to go and do hours with people and finding people to mentor you through the program was quite challenging. So there's all these things that have gone on in the past. Um, and a lot of us have worked hard. There's a lot of people have been together, you know, working with a skill set, bring up. So it will take a while to, to bring people into the, um, the mentorship programs, but we've, we're starting to build people around the country that can help with the training, with the on the job training. And I think that's maybe what's happened is that, you know, there are people and people were sent down to become an aqua instructor because there's a skill shortage and the reality of what it was they you know they weren't in the pool they had no idea what they were getting into and then it was all too much so there's lots of things that probably layered into it i hope that makes sense yeah no it does and and don mentioned the new training package the fitness training package which, which is out there now and um, what mm. Claire, what do you think the impact of that will be on the aqua exercise instructors if any well, I think for, for current instructors, it's got no impact because their certification remains the same. So we'll, we'll kind of put that one to bed. But for new instructors coming through, it's, it's given us an even playing field. But so before, what actually happened, if, if you're on the fitness side, you would be asked to do a full set three with those electives. If you were on the swimming side, you, there were some, you would just do the electives, which didn't include any anatomy and physiology as a unit. So they were probably involved somewhere within the course. So you have kind of this um, split uh, education, as it were, and there was no consistency across the board. The skill set actually means that this is an a, accredited set of units that says this is what an aqua instructor needs. This is an aqua instructor. So there's no gray area now. We know that wherever you train, whoever you train with, you are going to get a skill set which is quite significant for the industry. It's not just a cherry picked set of units made up by somebody because we think that's the right thing to do. It's actually been thought about, put together, and maybe it's not perfect yet. These things are always a work in progress. But I think from that point of view, it means that everybody's on the even playing field. Um, and then they can obviously do the training with whichever organization they choose. And then they can go out and register with whoever they want to register with as well. What it does is it makes it uh, more cost effective for, for people to do this course and all the time that they spend doing it will be directly relevant to making them a quality instructor. So it's, it's really specific and focused on aqua fitness. Um, but the other thing, uh, Barry, have you ever done aqua, an aqua fitness class? No. 
<laughs> and, and, and as CEO of Fitness Australia, and I'm not having a dig at you at all, but it's part of the challenge that we have here as aqua fitness instructors and, and leaders in the industry. We need to get people like you in the water. We need to get the whole of Fitness Australia in the water for a, a, a class. And I'll offer my services free. You get a I team of fitness instructors. <laughs> The Fitness Australia staff in the water in Sydney. Claire will will do it in Melbourne, and we'll we'll show you the benefits of aqua fitness and how hard it can be, how challenging it can be, how beneficial it is, how much fun it is just to be in the water, how therapeutic it is. There's so many benefits, but if we haven't got the leaders in the industry on our side, and we need to get them in the water to prove to them that it's a legitimate form of fitness, then we're going to struggle. It needs to happen from the top down. So. I'm going to put a challenge out there now. Okay, okay, Dom. So I, should have, I should have said yes. And now that <laughs> you definitely it. should have said yes. No, but there's, there's no point in bullshitting. You uh, just no, got look, stitched up, sorry. No, yeah, I did get stitched <laughs> up. And that, that wasn't on script. That's a bit unfair. But I'm more, more than happy. More than happy. Um, you're in Victoria, Dom? I'm in Sydney. Players oh, in Cronulla. Melbourne. Oh, bloody hell. That means you're just down the road. Okay, well, okay, let's 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 do that. Um, okay. That would be good. I mean, I get in the pool a lot, but it's mm. not to do... Uh, what you guys do it's just yeah, to yeah. do laps unfortunately yeah. not unfortunately I enjoy it but yeah. look you're quite you're quite right and I think listening to the two of you talk about the training package listening to it from outside and you, you may or may not know I don't come from the fitness sector I've only had three years in it now and that's probably long enough in many ways some people might think <laughs> um, but listening to you from the outside it sounds like this training package is giving you more specialization yeah. and, and through that has to come and don't take this the wrong way, more credibility and prestige in, in actually what you're doing rather than, because one of the things that I was thinking about when you were talking was one of the benefits of aqua exercise it's, is it's low impact. And I'm assuming that's, that's true. That's what I've heard. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, do you get referrals from where, where there is a pool and a gym in, in a one leisure centre? Do you get referrals from PT saying to Kabari or Bob or Mary or Jane, Actually, you need to go down and do get into the pool. It's low impact. You're going to still get the workout you need and that sort of gear. Or does that does that relationship happen or not happen? Yeah, yeah I would say um, across the board that relationship's not there um, unless right. someone works as a PT, as gym floor instructor, group X instructor, and teaches aqua fitness has that relationship. Um, it may happen in those situations, but. I would say, as a general rule, it doesn't. We don't, we haven't built those um, relationships yet. And, and it brings me to another point um, where you talked about challenges uh, in the industry. I think part of the challenge for us is that to be an aqua fitness instructor, it requires two specific sets of skills. Claire talked about anatomy and physiology. You need to be a trained fitness instructor to teach aqua fitness. But you also need to have, and you'll appreciate this as someone that loves the water, you need to know about the water principles. You need to know how water affects a workout. Because if you were going to do, if you were holding a hand weight and you were doing a bicep curl, you could get in the water and do that and home, uh, hold, hold a foam uh, dumbbell. The water flips a workout on its head. So instead of dealing with gravity, we're dealing with buoyancy. If you're holding a buoyant object and you do a bicep curl, it's actually a tricep workout. Mm because you're working the resistance on the yeah. down phase to push the bell away from the surface of the water. If you were doing that on land, it's completely opposite. So you can't just take your skills from, from the gym floor or from the group fitness world and bring it to the pool. And because it's such an, an, a niche set of uh, skills, combination of skills, it's a challenge. And, and the other challenge we have is dealing with center managers, club owners, uh, group fitness managers, because most of those people uh, don't have an appreciation or any knowledge of aqua fitness. And because they don't, they might have a Les Mills background, they might have a PT background, they might have a management background. Because they come with their own unique set of skills uh, but don't know anything about aqua fitness, it's difficult really then to earn their respect unless they get in the water and do it. And the most successful programs I've seen run around our country are the ones where the group fitness manager either still teaches aqua fitness or has taught aqua fitness in the past because they know that the wonderful benefits it offers and they know what it brings to people. Um, and so they're the ones that have been most successful. So I think what we need to do, and Claire and I were talking about this this morning, is 
being able to to build that bridge as you say build that bridge with pt staff with group x staff with club management with group fitness managers and the only way we can do that i think is by offering our services as far as consulting with um, club managers group fitness managers on ways that we can help them improve their program and it always comes down to money right money talks if we can help them build a program so they're going to make more money um, sign up more members, then I think there, there's appeal there from that perspective. So I, I'd like to put it out there now for anyone that's watching this, if, if they need any help, if their group fitness managers uh, need help in um, a, on any aspect of aqua fitness, um, and one of them will be workplace safety and work conditions, um, we, Claire and I would be happy to help. And I'm sure that we can find other industry leaders like Marietta Mahani, Tanja Lark, uh, Jenny Shambri Portelli, a whole heap of people that would be happy to put their hand up and work with club managers. Because Bill, uh, uh, Barry, sorry, the one thing I should really mention is um, there is a real issue at the moment in the industry as far as workplace safety. Uh, I don't know how many clubs I've been to where I've run uh, instructor trainings where they don't have an aqua frame, which gives us an ability to replicate what people are doing in the water while we're on land um, and saves our legs from jumping up and down or doing whatever we need to do and not jumping on slippery tiles or hard concrete and also an instructor mat. Well, I mean, we struggle to, to get new centers to buy $5 noodles and replace them once a year, which would probably cost $150 max to buy 20 or 30 noodles. Yet, you know, there's uh, treadmills and machine weights, things like that going in and out of the gym on a regular basis. So again, it's about building relationships with club management to, to, to talk about the benefits and, and how they can best run an aquatic program to make it financially rewarding. I think also before I go to you, Claire, given that um, we've got this new membership category for what is this week known as Fitness Australia, next week known as something else, um, it's beholden of us if we are going to reach out and and welcome you guys into the new entity we actually need to work and take what what dom has just said to try and build those relationships to try and put that workplace health and safety situation in play there as well because um well it's it, we we can't sort of say to you come and join us and then not work with you to actually advance your you know your modality etc so if you've got anything you wanted to add to what what dom was saying there at all Claire? Yeah, I, I think in some respects, um, I, I mean, I teach a lot of classes down here in Melbourne and Aqua is almost so popular that clubs don't seem to think they need to make any investment into it because my club, I mean, the classes are full. There's such a growing market and we're turning people away. So maybe from a business perspective, they go, well, this is working. And, and instructors are really loyal. They turn up, they do their job. And I'm, I'm fortunate, one of the clubs I work at, we've got a mat, we've got a frame, we've got a good aqua system. The other club, I haven't got a frame, I haven't got a mat. Um, so I make the best of it with what I've got. But you know, we turn up, but the classes are full, so they don't see that there's a great problem. I think what they possibly don't see is if there was greater investment, it's going to bring people to want to teach the classes for starters, because people, you know, not everybody's going to keep coming to an environment that's not um, where they don't feel supported, where they don't feel, you know, recognised. Um, whereas if you've got all the things you need, it's going to help. And also the equip from the equipment side, the water is amazing. I mean, don't get me wrong, the resistance to the water is the best thing that we've got. But by adding a piece of equipment, what we're giving to our clients is, is a variety of training. And we all know that one of the parts of training is to give people variety because you can only overload so much when you're just using the water. And we know also need to create a training response. We need to overload the body. So we're gonna get much better um, physical responses from the clients if we can have the extra investment. But again, it comes down to maybe the other people understanding the concept and just thinking beyond what they see as, um, and I don't like to make this you know, stereotypical, but they see the little old people bobbing around in the water. What they're not seeing is the work that's going on. And I can hand on heart say that the people that come to my classes, they're stronger than a lot of 20 and 30 year olds, but we could make them even stronger with, we have even more small piece of equipment. 
So just picking up what you've just said there, Claire, and I'm glad you said it and not me. Um, when you talk about the little old people bobbing in the water, I mean, that's a fairly common uh, perception, I guess, or, or image. Um, and certainly when I was a member of a, a large leisure centre in, in Victoria, in country Victoria, the people that were doing aqua exercise fit into that category. So what, how do, how do you change that? Um, or do you want to change that? How do you change it? And what, if anything, can, can Fitness Australia do to help that, that process? I, I think it's just the, from the point of view of the education. So we, we are in fitness. We're here to make, help people get stronger and fitter. And the, even though the demographic tends to be the, the old demographic, what I think we forget is that people that are 60 and 70 these days are a lot stronger than a 60 and 70 year old was yeah, exactly, you know, 80 year olds. Um, they're a lot stronger than they were like 10 years ago when fitness first began. Our role is to make them strong to live their lives, their everyday lives. If we're not giving them that, that training overload, we're not serving our clients. That's, that's the whole thing. But I think it's the, the education side that's maybe missing. We can do that. We can talk to people um, and just know if we get more results from people in the pool, then we're going to drive more people coming to the pool, which is going to need more classes. It's, it's kind of where we started, I don't know. Yeah. But the conversation here today is a starting point. So thank you for inviting us on and giving us this opportunity. Mm. So Dom, we know uh, what, what sort of are the obstacles for people to go into a gym, you know, body image, um, fear of being judged, et cetera, all that sort of carry on, uh, which are all relevant, obviously. I don't want to dismiss those. What are the, what are the, are there any obstacles to people actually, and maybe maybe we've sort of touched a little bit with the image of who goes into a mm. aqua exercise, but what are the obstacles to getting people into the water apart from fear of water or something like that? Yeah, I, I think, and it goes hand in hand with what you just spoke of as to the, the, um, the cliche of an aqua participant is the fact that, you know, some an old lady with a flowery cap on that bobs around and laughs and talks while they're doing it. And it's, yeah, I mean, even some of these images we're seeing on the PowerPoint, these people are young, but some of the other images and, and everything that you you see um, in marketing material for aqua fitness classes usually targets that market. Um, but that is probably part of what prohibits other people from coming to class too. Some of the most successful aqua programs I've seen run do so because rather than just, because if you look at any group fitness program, they will not just have uh, a fitness class or a cardio class or something like that. They'll actually name the specific outcome of that fitness class will be evident by the title of that class. Les Mills programs, you have pump, you know, fusion, you know, all different types. If you look at a regular aqua program, and it's this will be the case because people that are putting the schedule together probably aren't teaching the classes, it'll just say aqua, 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 aqua. Aqua 9 o'clock, aqua 10 o'clock, aqua 6 p.m. I mean, to me, that if, if I had the perception that aqua was for old people, that's not telling me anything different. And, and the successful programs that have been run are successful because they'll have a 6.30 a.m. class, which pre-lockdown would have been perfect for people on their way to work. Go to a 6.30 workout, out of the uh, club by 7.30, quarter to eight, off to work directly. That is going to cater to people, a, a younger demographic, or a, or a stronger de demographic maybe. And therefore, once you have a group of people together that want more from their aqua fitness class, you can give it to them. And you can label it accordingly. You know, aqua blast, aqua cardio, aqua something that gives the impression that it's not for the old ladies with the flowery caps. You can have a nine o'clock, a 8.30 class, a 9.30 class for people that aren't going to work um, for whatever reason. But if, if people can get really clever with their scheduling, they could then preempt the type of class that they're going to run just simply by titling it, giving it a good description, and, and then having their instructors talk to their clients about the most suitable class for their ability. So having classes that cater to different people uh, and different abilities and fitness levels, um, it could be a way around that. But also some of the marketing material, someone's going to have to to get busy with really just making aqua a little bit sexier. 
Well, I can't promise to make it sexy, but when I come down and take up your challenge, I'm happy to put a floral cap on if you like. <laughs> you think that's going to help? But uh, <laughs> I, I get to the old, I, I qualify as the old person and I'll, I'll get the uh, the floral hat as well. If well that's let, let, let's just agree you'll probably get your hair wet, so you might need a cap. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so one of the things that I thought was pretty unfair and I couldn't understand during the lockdowns um, was that pools were, were shut down at the same time as well, particularly outdoor pools. It, it, mm. I, I couldn't quite make sense of that. Um, I couldn't understand why they were supposedly mm. high risk and all that sort of carry on. But what were there any unique sort of circumstances or, or situations um, that aqua exercise instructors had during the lockdowns that, that were unique to, their, to that, that cohort? Claire, um, Claire is the yeah, perfect well, example. I, um, I actually brought a lot of my aqua fitness participants online to Zoom and though we didn't have a pool, um, out of all the groups of people that I work with, they were the people that really needed to keep moving. Um, so they actually participated with me with um, some aerobics, some circuits, uh, Pilates training, we've done some line dance, we've done lots of different things over the last well, almost two years in Melbourne because yeah that's Melbourne um and we're still going with a couple of the classes for them because they've enjoyed the so the flip side is that they've actually discovered that they can do some land stuff so this is where things can start to join together and amalgamate really because the beauty is that you can work out on land and you can work out on the water um so yeah from that point of view we had no pause but and I know there are many other instructors that did exactly the same they you know, they they went onto Zoom and they did what they could with their clients. But I did not give them chair based classes because they were aqua people. We went, we just went to land stuff, and they were absolutely fine. So that, that's how we dealt with. That's how I personally dealt with it because, as you say, the pools weren't open. We had no pool to go to. Nothing. Dom, you're Barry, the other thing that we did, and it wasn't necessarily with <laughs> clients, although there were some clients on there. But uh, just to keep people active, a group of us instructors. Um, we did it every day for eight weeks during lockdown last year. And we did it in this most recent lockdown. We did it three times a week. We uh, got online together and did a Zoom dance party. So I was DJ three times a week or every day last year. And uh, we danced for 20 minutes together. And really what it did, it, it recreated, although there was no water, it recreated um, that sense of community that people really missed um by going to aqua classes and it kept them moving and gave them and and i, I got so many messages from on, on the days when we weren't dancing from people saying oh i really miss it this morning it usually gets me out of bed it's the first thing i do when i get out of bed and it gets me moving for the day and today i'm still in bed kind of thing so yeah although it's not aqua specific but um talking about in, from an instructor and from an industry perspective uh, what it really has uh, brought to the fore, and, and it's not only with Aqua Fitness, is the advent of online learning. Um, we have run in the last 12 months, and we just ran our third uh, conference, a virtual conference specific to Aqua Fitness. We've, we've run three in the last 12 months, um, last November, and then again in March, and it was uh, six hours of learning. Um, from international presenters, because of course we were online uh, via Zoom. And so we have the ability then to tap into the international presenter uh, market. So we've had, you know, legendary uh, presenters from the US, the UK and all over Australia that um, have offered uh, aquatic education to our instructors. So that's been a real blessing. Claire has put together a, um, a new aqua instructor training certification um, that can be the workbooks can be done online lectures have been done virtually um, and people are hooking up with mentors to do their practical work and that's been another so I've seen a couple of questions come through in the Q&A from people in regional areas and they're the ones that have been the most grateful because mm -hmm. people in Sydney and Melbourne and the other big cities can access live trainings and workshops and have done over the years those in regional areas um, have to fly into or travel great distances and then pay for accommodation to stay in a big city overnight so that they can attend a training so they can get enough CECs to re-register. Now, they're, they're always the first people to sign up. You know, like 50% of the people that we had at our conference were from regional uh, Australia because now they can tap into all this aqua education. So it's, it's really been a revelation 
uh, and a great innovation for us. So we're very grateful for that. Yeah, and that I think, sorry, you go clear. And I think it's going to help with the skills shortage because from a you have to sometimes step back and look from a business perspective and say, well, I've got three people that want to be trained to be an aqua instructor, and it's not viable to go to that location to do the training. You know, you sometimes have to take a step back and by offering something where people can be self-paced, um, have you online, um, and I'm here to answer any questions online with when they sign up and they go and find a mentor. It just makes it more available to more people like Don was saying up in region where they, you know, the cost of flying somewhere, staying somewhere and the cost of the train on top of that makes it very prohibitive for, you know, a little return on investment to a certain extent because most of these people they're not doing it as a full-time job they're doing it as a you know maybe two three four classes a week so all that rolls into it so just from what happened with the lockdowns and us going well we're just going to go online it's actually opened a whole new world of possibilities of people that we can reach with the education that we've got so that that's been that's been brilliant and speaking about conferences have either of you spoken to Filex about re-including Aqua as part of their program because I know they're putting their program together for next year at the moment. Yeah, we're back on. Good. We're in there already scheduled. Good. <laughs> good. Okay. Well, that's yeah. good. And we're very grateful. Have they booked the pool? <laughs> They've booked the pool. <laughs> They've booked the pool. <laughs> I thought it was going to be in the harbour. I'm sorry. I'm... <laughs> well, there was always an opportunity, right? This is, Barry, this is my this is my lifelong goal. I I, I don't want it to happen before. Uh, after I die, I want it to happen before I die. Um, I used to dream of when we were at Darling Harbour for Filex of having a, a purpose built pool in the forecourt there outside the Darling Harbour Conference Convention Centre and having live demonstrations of aqua fitness so that we could raise the profile because there were thousands of fitness instructors, PTs walking past lots of you know general public walking past and my goal was because they do it in europe all the time mm. they, have, they, do. they build pools in piazzas mm. just for a weekend so that they can run aqua fitness um master classes within their fitness conferences and i think it can happen and i'm going to put it out there now so if you think it's an opportunity to make that happen at some stage in the future I, i'm sure we can do it and i've got footage for you um, I've got sample videos to show you if you want to see uh, of what they do do and how they put it together because it's remarkable and and, and it's the it's the actual uh, that's the platform we need to take aqua fitness to the next level. Anything's possible in today's world Don we're living okay. in a brand new world but as, as we do come out of COVID um, particularly in Victoria and New South Wales what can gym managers uh, do to I guess reassure encourage um, support aqua exercise instructors in their facility. Claire, do you want this? Yeah, I mean, initially, I, I guess it's, as we were talking about, the, the support with the, just the basics like a mat and maybe a frame or a chair to sit on, that's, that's a good start. And coming through to their classes, when we're teaching, maybe come down and see the class, come and, you know, meet the members and, be more visual, be more, uh, you know, available, more visual around the pool deck because we do feel, we can feel quite isolated because we, we just come in, we see our members and we go. So there's, there's, there's no real, I guess, connection felt all the time. And I know the clubs are busy, but I think that would be a start just to actually come down and maybe take part in the classes um, have a look to see what's going on and just make us feel like, oh yeah, you've seen me because I think, I think that's that's part of the part of the issue that's going on that we do feel separate. Um, so if they came down and done that, and then maybe the discussion can open about what else can we do for you? You know, what else do you need? Do you need some new noodles? Just going into the cupboard and having a look at the equipment, as Dom said, you know, you a noodle is like five bucks. And the ones that I've got where I work, well, one center won't buy me equipment. And one sense we've got equipment, but it, some of it needs replacing. And it's just, it's just a, an afterthought. So I think that would be a good start just to recognize us, come down and see us and get in the pool and maybe do some classes or even ask us to, I know most of the instructors are very happy to put on a staff class for people. Um, and that's, that's a good opportunity for the staff to get in and 
have a chat and, and do a class together. So that's just a few few suggestions. How about you, Dom? Yeah, look, I, I think um, I'm firstly very, very happy to offer my services to anyone that works in gym management, pool management, um, or as a group fitness manager. And I'm happy to have that conversation with people about the best way to manage their program and things that must be, uh, when Claire, when, when you just started then, you said it would be great to have this and it would be great to have a mat and a frame. Well, I think it's absolutely essential to have it. I don't think it's an option. I don't think that people get to choose. I think if you're gonna have uh, an aqua fitness class, you have an aqua frame for an instructor, you have a mat, you have a chair close by, um, you have barricades so that people can't walk past you while you're teaching because you're probably going to take an eye out or, or you're going to kick someone while you're doing your moves. Um, and I think all of that is necessary. And, 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 you know, I've got a whole checklist that I can work through with group fitness managers to best manage their program. The other thing I think is really important is that people work um, and instructors can initiate this is we need to build more camaraderie as part instructors can literally and I've been teaching for nearly 30 years and I have walked in and out of centers without anyone saying hello to me not making contact maybe saying hello to a lifeguard as they open up the storage unit for me to get equipment out but uh, otherwise I can get the mic myself I can get the um, stereo myself I can set up the equipment I, reception don't even say hello as you walk in and then no one says hello as you leave uh, you don't even need to sign on anywhere and I mean that that is a lonely experience for an instructor but luckily we have our participants that make us feel like we're part of a team and that's a wonderful thing so I think that um, instructors can work hard to build relationships gym management pool management can work hard group fitness managers can work hard and my last point to that is I think uh, organizations like Fit Fitness Australia and Oswim can work hard <clears throat> to offer leadership in that so that it comes from the top down. Because anything that uh, Fitness Australia put out, fitness clubs will listen to and they'll take advice from that. And, and if, if uh, you know, the, the um, fitness bodies and uh, aquatic bodies are making a point of drawing attention to this, then people are going to take notice. So it's it's a, not enough for instructors to jump up and down and scream and complain. I think it needs to come from the top down. And so, you know, this conversation is wonderful, Barry, that we're having that. And this is the start, I hope, of, of uh, many more conversations and, cool. and ways we can work together to have long-term effect, uh, positive effect on the industry. Let's put let's put something com concrete around this, um, so that you know you can hold myself as the CEO of what's currently called Fitness Australia. What's going to be called something else next week, um, but also to I can hold you accountable because we are developing at the moment. And Scott, if you're listening to this, please take a note. Um, we're developing at the moment a certification, voluntary certification program for our businesses, which will parallel the accreditation program for our individual members. Now, from what you've just been describing, and again, I apologize if I got this wrong, but it sounds like what you are seeking as a modality is basically acknowledgement of being valid, of being credible, and of being not the poor cousin um, in a center. Now, if that's a fair take on that, and please forgive me if I've insulted you, it would seem to me, if we're introducing a certification program for businesses, part of that certification needs to address the issues you have just raised. Mm -hmm. particularly workplace health and safety, particularly, I guess, um, the fact that people need to feel part of a broader team, because when people go now to a, a health club, a leisure centre, you know, for their overall wellness and holistic, holistic state of mind and, and body, etc. I think we can build into the certification program, some, I'll use the word compliance, um, sort of regimes in there, which are going to support the issues you have just raised, but I'll need from the two of you is to give us some direction and review what that might look like. Uh, and we don't want to make it onerous, but it has to be obviously things that these centres be held accountable. So the managers basically can't get away with not buying, you know, noodles that fall apart or not giving you your mats and so on. Um, so I think we can actually get something concrete to come out of this. So it's not just a gab fest. We actually can get something concrete moving forward. And under the new entity and, and our new strategy, it fits, it just fits beautifully. So that's good. I have to ask you, Claire, before we move on, is that you in that picture? It is me. 
in a beautiful pool in Florida. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> doing, my, doing my belly. You see how versatile the water is, you can do anything. And I have to say, Barry, you are spot on when you say that Aqua is always like the poor cousin. And that is how it feels. And, and I've been teaching Aqua for a long time and it's not just specific to Australia, it's worldwide. It seems to be a problem everywhere. And as I said, I, I think it's probably to do with the fact that the water itself is successful and you see people having fun. So they, there's not this um, recognition that there could be anything else done. And, you know, Marietta, I think typed in, in the, in the comments, they are paying members. So even aside from the fact that the instructors need the support, the members are actually paying the same membership as everybody else in the gym. And a lot of aqua participants, they just come to the pool. That's where they come, that's what they love. And so they're almost getting, you know, treated like the poor cousins as well. So you are spot on. And, you know, I think it'll be great if we can have some guide, real guidelines put in place for clubs to set up this much more professional looking deck space for people because it's going to look different. It's going to look professional. And when people see that on the deck, it's going to make them take notice rather than this poor aqua instructor trying to do their best around people running behind them in absolute chaos. So thank you. No, no, sorry, no. just to add to that, Claire, I agree 100%. Um, the fact that aqua fitness is still happening is, is testament to the fact that we, the aqua fitness industry, is a very resilient industry. We are strong. We are bound together. We have some really strong leaders in our industry. I'm very grateful for the work that Kerry Parkinson, Lorraine Dunn, Jenny Shembury portelli have done in the years um, the last 20 years to promote it. Um, and our communities within our own centres are very strong and resilient. Um, and we form a great bond. And so the fact that we're still going, we're still strong, um, has brought us to this point. So I'm, I'm really excited uh, about that because um, it's only going to get better and better from here. I know it. Now, Dom, you, you set me a challenge at the start of this, so I'm going to return that back to you. So I've got... <laughs> I've got my Victorian staff coming up here for um, an end of year um, thank you, et cetera. We were looking for something to do before we go out for lunch. If you can, ah, find, us, you know, if you can find us a pool somewhere uh, that's, that's heated to at least 85 degrees. Um, <laughs> no, but if you can find us a pool somewhere, we will come along and you can put us through our, our um, and I'll wear my floral cap, and we, okay. you can put us through um, some uh, regime. So we then can become not just uh, converts, but uh, disciples for aqua exercise. Consider it organised. Okay, now, a couple of questions have been coming through in the comments about are there any courses you might recommend um, for people that might be thinking about getting into this field or getting into this water? Um, Claire? Yeah, look, there are, there are se uh, several organisations that run their new instructor training. Uh, Claire Barker-Hemmings is one of the facilitators. Um, there are other organisations. So I'm happy to provide people with that information if they want to uh, contact me via aquafitnessonline.com. So the email address is dom at aquafitnessonline.com. And there are also some amazing websites. Uh, mine included aquafitnessonline.com, marietamahani.com.au, uh, marietamahani education is another one there are some really great resources out there um and i'm happy to to share if people let me know what they're looking for i'm happy to share information with them claire yeah. is um is a member of uh aquatic uh, aquatic aquatic exercise association and she can tell you a little bit about them also yeah so the aea are, are based in the usa but they're an international body so that's how we've got links to fantastic educators and research all over the world. So I've, I've been going to their conference up until the time that we couldn't go anymore because of not being able to fly since 2003. Um, and they do great online resources as well. So if you're looking for continuing education, we provide it, Marietta provides it, AEA provides continuing education. Um, Donna Wilmont, who is over in Adelaide, she's got a whole, um, she does a lot with, big equipment and other, so she's involved with the European Exercise, Aquatic Exercise Association, I think I got that right. Um, so there's lots, many people within Australia and also worldwide that are doing continuing education. But to get started, 
we do it we do a distance online package and there's some other companies out there as well so drop us a an, an email and we can point you in whichever direction you need to go okay thanks Gary. Uh, just, sorry just barry can i go. just mention before before that um I don't know if anyone's mentioned to you, but there was a survey done recently uh, for ACRA instructors across Australia, and the survey came back with some information that majority of instructors had been teaching, or more than 50% of the instructors had been teaching for 15 years or longer. And I just heard um, Fitness Australia had, has, is running a survey for ACRA centres, and the majority of the staff that had were ACRA instructors that worked at fitness clubs or aquatic centres had been there for an average of six years. And I think that's those those stats are astounding and testament to the fact that, you know, aqua fitness people are really passionate about what they do. Um, and so I think that um, like the members, once you've got them hooked, they'll stay forever because they love what they do. And I, I, again, I think that that's a standout in the fitness industry and the aquatic world when the fitness industry, you know, PTs are dropping like flies, aquatic industries can't hold on to their swim teachers. So again, you're working with quality people here um, when you associate with the aqua fitness industry. You're gonna love it, Barry. You'll get hooked on aqua fitness. <laughs> Going to retire too. Now we've got a couple of questions here, guys. So let me just bring these up and we'll... Um... Okay, so from Stephen, uh, recently a frame and mat were purchased, however, only on the back of a return to work plan for an injured instructor. What is your advice on selling the idea of aqua frame and mat to those responsible for making purchases as a preventative measure, as opposed to reactive? Has much research been done on benefits of the equipment to demonstrate safety outcomes for instructors? This is directed at you, Dom. Look, I, I don't think there is anything in black and white to say that people, uh, that, that um, employers need to provide that, um, but I think there should be. So um, I think you were just saying you would be happy to add guidelines to uh, an employer membership to, to make that happen. So yeah, let's, let's continue to talk about that because yeah. there should be something in writing to say, this is the absolute minimum. If you're gonna run aqua fitness classes, you must have a frame, you must have a mat, you must provide a safe environment to work. So if it's not, it, I don't know if, and, and if anyone does know that, I would love to hear it. But if it's if it's not in black and white, it should be very soon. I'm actually stunned to hear that, Dom, um, when you raised it earlier on, because I would have thought from an insurance point of view, public liability, et cetera, you know, for the sake of a small outlay, what it's going to save them in literally tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just don't understand the logic of that, to be quite honest. Yeah, look, it, it goes beyond that. I mean, there's very, not every center has a microphone. And I mean, group fitness studios have mics and they're in controlled environments, yeah. quiet controlled environments. The only thing is the music and the instructor can control that. We're working in pool settings, usually with swimming lessons happening at the same time, school groups coming through, uh, kids play areas where there's water shooting out everywhere and splashing, there's so much noise. And we're dealing with older population where people have, you know, maybe can't see so well or hear so well. So many challenges going on. And then there are employers that think they're not obligated to buy someone a microphone or a stereo to use. It's a, it's, I love aqua fitness, Barry, but there's, some of the conditions are appalling at some of the centers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that comes back to the poor cousin um, sort of situation. So, Claire, a question from Deborah. Uh, she hasn't taught Aqua for a few years now, but mm -hmm. close to re-entering. Um, what would be the current pay expectation for an Aqua instructor? Well, I think that depends where you are in Australia. So, it's a group fitness. It, it, for group fitness, it can be anywhere, just from my experience where I am, anywhere from $50 to $80 per session. So I think it depends where you are and whether you're attached to a swim school. I don't know if they have a different pay rate. And it's like anything, I guess, go and, go and speak to the people you want to work for and find out what their what their pay rates are. But that's a whole can of worms that probably shouldn't be opened. <laughs> okay, and uh, Anna has asked the question of myself, will Fitness Australia count overseas training for CECs? And if you can perhaps, um, I'll get Luke to put my email address in the chat line here. If you can perhaps, uh, Luke is doing that now. If you can contact me, we will work out um, what you're talking about. I mean, obviously we recognize uh, appropriate 
study, et cetera. We don't want to put in obstacles for anybody. We just need to make sure we reinforce standards and so on. Um, one from Leon here, for an outdoor pool, what is the maximum in a class? Again, that might depend on states, but perhaps you can give us a general idea. You know, maximum numbers in an outdoor pool class. Okay, yeah, look, so, oh, sorry, Dom, you go. No, you go. I was going to say, um, that generally, it depends on how much, what distance you've got, how many lanes you've got. So is it a 25 metre pool? Do you have all of that 25 metres? Is all of that space shallow or does it go from shallow to deep? So I will probably need a little bit more, but there are guidelines. Austrim have some guidelines as uh, spacing for people. So if you had um, 10 or 12 meters, it's one and a half uh, distance between people. That generally means you can fit eight, eight people per lane, um, depending on how wide the lanes are, how many lanes you've gotten. Uh, it, it also is dependent on the depth of the pool. Some pools start at 0.9 and go through to 1.3, others start at 1.2 and go down to 1.8. It, it's a challenge for those pools because there are some people that are not so tall. They can't even stand with their feet grounded in 1.2 water. So there, there are so many challenges as far as um, getting people to have a good workout in different depth pools. Um, but so the, other, Leon, the other thing I was going to Leon, say, Don. I was going to say, Leon, feel free to contact me um, to discuss it is that there are guidelines depending which organization your center's attached to. So there are some guidelines out there that say the maximum is 40 people if the pool's lifeguarded. And if the pool's unlifeguarded, you, it's just you. Um, I think it's off the top of my head, 20 people, I might have got that wrong, but there's different guidelines from different organizations. So it's having a conversation with the management team to find out what whose guidelines they're following. I know that Oswim had guidelines about maximum people. So that comes down again down to safety. Um, so where I teach, my maximum is 40 people in the pool, be it indoors or outdoors. And if you're in a deeper environment, you need more space per person because they can't, they're not tethered down. They need a bit more space to move than if they're shallow. So there's things like that to consider, but there are some guidelines out there currently. So it depends which organization that your center is attached to as to whether they've got specific maximum numbers. Mm. And Barry, again, Claire and I, and I'm sure a couple of other industry leaders would be happy to work with you to put some get together some really clear guidelines on, on what I think that is in the process, actually. And I think it's happening now. But um, yeah, we'd be happy to work with you to get that. Uh, currently, the challenge is that most centres are coming out of lockdown in Sydney and Melbourne, and they're working with a maximum of 20 people in yeah. a class. I think I've heard that many times over the last few weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, this would be a good time to, to, to have this conversation as uh, restrictions ease and class numbers um, are also um, get larger and larger, then the, that conversation will be more important. Yeah, and we are negotiating with the New South Wales government about relaxing that 20 in the group size across the In board. Melbourne, it's different. We're up to full numbers already. Yeah. We'd be, as soon as we opened up, we went straight back to full numbers. So it's just different, differs from state to state as well, seemingly. Yeah. And Anna's put another comment in there that uh, she's old and jaded. Nothing wrong with being old, Anna, believe me. <laughs> but uh, we can do something about, about your jaded, I hope. So if you want to reach out to me, I'll get that CUC question back to you. Uh, the answer back to you. Okay, so we have, I think, a survey on the last tile, Luke, if you can just flick it. There we go. Um, if you can, so there's two surveys there, one for professionals, that's your instructors, and one for the businesses. If you got the time, we'd really appreciate you um, completing that survey, and that'll probably be the last time that the people uh, on this side of it actually see that logo, but that's okay. Uh, any final closing comments? Claire, I'm going to go to you first. I'm just excited about where we're going. This has taken many years of uh, us educators putting our heads together and you know bringing the industry up and getting more recognition, but we know it's not an overnight process. We know it's gonna take time. Um, I think it's clear that we're all in it for the long haul. So I, I'm really excited that we're going to get you know, more exposure and more people on board to teach classes. And you know, I'm happy to, as Dom says, help anybody. In, Come along to our classes, come and try it and see what you're missing. <laughs> Dom? Yeah, look, I, I, again, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to, to chat with you and share this information. Uh, I am excited about the future. I don't think aqua fitness is going anywhere and it never will. There will always be a place for it. 
in the fitness world and the aquatic world, but can we elevate that status um, to a level that it should be at um, is my motivation. That's what, that's what I'm passionate about. And um, I, I think that we're on a, a good trajectory. I think uh, having this conversation, talking with you and the uh, direction that you guys are heading, that that organization is heading, um, sounds like we're in line um, and our values and mission is the same. So I'm looking forward to working with you more. Thanks, Dom. And I'm absolutely uh, confident we are in the right direction. Sorry, uh, on the same you know, flight path here. And mm -hmm. I'd encourage uh, people that are tuning into this webinar, whether they are a current Fitness Australia member or not, if you're interested in the new direction we are taking, which includes aqua exercise, to join us next Thursday afternoon for webinar we will, when we will be launching the new strategic direction, the new name of the organisation, the new logo of the organisation, lots of other things to share with you. And hopefully, it gives you from the aqua exercise instructor world a bit of confidence that you can work with our new entity and we can make things better for everybody and get you off the poor cousin status into equal cousin status. And mm -hmm. uh, if I have to wear a bloody floral hat to do that, I'm more than happy to do that. We got to so, turn into the sexy cousin. Oh, well, no, that's, that's a bridge too far, Dom. Sorry about that one. <laughs> We need a video of when you do the class, though, Barry. Thank uh, you. Yeah, we might think about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks very much, Claire. Thanks, Dom. It's been great speaking with you. Um, I love your passion, love your energy, and being a uh, a water baby from way back, I love I love the commitment to to water as well. So thanks very much for your work and your commitment, and looking forward to doing some great things together. Yeah, I'll okay, look you. Barry. Thank See you. ya. Bye. Bye. -bye.